In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, hi there. No, don't mind me. I was just praying for your future anger issues. Why? Well, I just kind of guess that most of you would be pretty cross when you realize that this whole opening was just one big pun. So why do Anglicans cross ourselves? Well, the first reason is because it is truly a Catholic practice, with a lowercase c, obviously. Last week we talked about how to be lowercase c Catholic means to be truly universal, to do and believe what the Christian church has always done and believed. And so crossing ourselves goes way back to the earliest centuries of the church fathers. It was the church father Tertullian in the early 100s, around probably one of the words that they crossed their foreheads every chance they got. In their going out, in their coming in, before they ate meals, whenever they said hello, anytime they felt temptation, he said they would wear their foreheads out making the sign of the cross. Now the sign of the cross has since developed from just being on the forehead. It was that small at that time because of the great persecution that came against the church. Today, it is the whole body. So for those of you who don't know, the way that you make the sign of the cross is you do two fingers down and three fingers up. This represents the two natures of Christ, divine and human, and the three persons of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You pinch these fingers together, and you start with the head, and you say, in the name of the Father, and then you go to the heart, and you say, in the name of the Son, and then you go from shoulder to shoulder, in the name of the Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit, if you like. Many people will then either end in the middle of their chest or they'll kiss their fingers, some combination thereof. So all together it looks like this. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so part of that is deep symbolism. Apart from it being Catholic, apart from it being something that almost every church father attested and part of our practice for, gosh, since then that we know of, there is deep symbolism in the sign of the cross. So we start at the head, like I just said, in the name of the Father. Well, the Father is the head of the Godhead. He is the wellspring, the Eastern Church says. And then the Father sent his heart into our hearts, his Son, Jesus Christ. So in the name of the Father and the Son, and then of the Holy Ghost, from shoulder to shoulder, because the Holy Spirit is what strengthens us for service, but also, he's what enables us to live the Christian life of servitude, to love others. And, indeed, also, the Holy Spirit, being the third person of the Trinity, is the spirit of love between the Father and the Son. And so, we're able to enter into that fellowship. We're able to offer what the Bible calls the right hand of fellowship into the Godhead. Because Christ has lifted us up to that place, the Holy Spirit brings us into that relationship of love. The early church called it the perichoresis, meaning the great dance of love amongst the Trinity. So what is another reason for crossing yourself? So far, because it's Catholic and because it has great symbolism. Well, another reason is because it's a prayer. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you, whenever you say that, it should recall to mind the presence of the Holy Trinity, that the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost are always ever present with you and that they delight in being with you. So the Father, we are inside of him and he is outside of us. Now this isn't pantheism, this isn't paganism, but St. Paul says that in him we live and we move and we have our very being. And so the Father is everywhere. He is outside of us and we are inside of him. We are his innermost thoughts of joy and love. And then the Son. We are in the Son as the Son is in us. He is the vine. We are the branches. And so Christ commands us to stay in Him as He stays in us. We are His very body. And whenever we receive the Eucharist, He enters into our bodies. And He is in us as we are in Him. So He is ever with us in that way, both in that we are part of Him, but now He has entered into us. And then lastly, the Holy Ghost Christ has sent his spirit into our hearts, into our lives, 
mm-hmm. we've now become marked by it. No longer does the Holy Spirit just come upon people and sit there for a while like in the Old Testament, but because of Jesus Christ himself, the Spirit dwells in you. He is your ever-present friend and comforter and confidant. And so the sign of the cross is a prayer that reminds you that you are part of the perichoresis, part of the great dance and relationship of love. Another reason is because it wards off the devil. The devil is terrified of the cross. I mean, are you kidding? The the cross is the symbol of shame to the devil because Christ took his shame on the cross and then flipped it around and shoved it onto the devil. The devil is humiliated by the cross. He is defeated by the cross. The cross is the greatest weapon against temptation and against spiritual oppression, against Any time the devil or spiritual forces of evil come against you, any time your flesh itself tempts you, make the sign of the cross. Say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Focus on his presence. And then that sign will frighten and terrify the enemy. Another reason why it does this is because the cross, in calling it the sign of the cross, we are making a theological statement. So in church theology and church history, A sign is anything that confers an inner grace through an outward means. It is is almost the same thing as calling something a sacrament. Now, making the sign of the cross is not one of the seven sacraments. And it is not necessary in any way for your spiritual health. But there is some grace conferred there. And how could there not be? Because Christ died on the cross. It is now the most blessed object in all of creation. For it's God shed his blood upon it. And so now that symbol, which is the symbol of our salvation, carries in and of itself immense power through the mighty grace of Christ and his shed blood. Just like we, if you have the gift of wonders, or like the apostles whenever they performed miracles, it wasn't they themselves who did it. It was Christ's grace through them. Christ has now appointed the cross to be a symbol of salvation and healing. It is a blessing. You are blessing yourself. This is why whenever a priest or a bishop makes the sign of the cross over us like that, after the absolution, we cross ourselves because he is blessing us and then we are taking that blessing and furthering it. Because also, too, we are a nation of priests. And so while the priest is the only one who has the power and the authority to pronounce the absolution... We as priests have the authority to bless and to bless ourselves in this way if we so desire it and do this intentionally. It also marks you out as a Christian. Making the sign of the cross is a powerful, powerful tool of evangelism and apologetics. So if I go out in in public and I'm eating a meal and before my meal with my friends or with my family, I start praying over it. And then I say, amen, and dig in. Maybe where I'm from in the deep south, the Bible Belt, most people will assume that you're a Christian. But for those of you watching maybe in New England or on the west coast of the United States, or if you're watching literally anywhere else in the world, just because somebody bows their head and prays before a meal or bows their head and prays in any situation doesn't mean that they're a Christian. They could be a Muslim or a Hindu or a Jew or or maybe even some Buddhists. And and as strange as it sounds, maybe even some New Agers or Wiccans, they tend to pray in weird ways too. And so crossing yourself, making the sign of the cross, lets the world know, guess what? I am a Christian and I am unashamed. I am a representative of God on behalf to the world because I am a nation. I'm part of the nation of priests, but the priesthood of all believers. And so I'm going to represent my God to you through my acts of loving prayer that you may see me do, and I'm going to cross myself to let you know that I'm a Christian. It also gives people the opportunity, if they've been wondering about Christianity or if God is moving on them in an especially powerful way, to come to you and ask you, why did you cross yourself? What does it mean to be a Christian? Are you a Roman Catholic? Are you an Orthodox? Are you something else? Which, we're Anglicans, but anyway... It gives you that opportunity to share the gospel in a way that maybe you didn't have the chance to before. And not just does it mark you as a Christian, it marks you as a non-heretic. Because 
by itself, like I said, it is a Trinitarian prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And so you are a Trinitarian, (laughs) non-heretical Christian. And so these are all really good reasons about why we cross ourselves. But did you know that it's also biblical? In Revelation chapter 7, verses 2 through 4, which I'll drop in a link down in the comments, or actually I just encourage you to pick up a Bible and look it up yourself. Um, It says that in the end times, in the end ages, Christ's members will be sealed by his marking. Well, what is the symbol? What is the seal of Christ? It is his cross. And so we are manifesting a future reality into the present on ourselves. But not just that, we are manifesting the current present reality into the outward world. How are we doing this? In 2 Corinthians, St. Paul writes that we are sealed and anointed by God. Anointing always happened on the head. It was always something that was poured over on top of somebody, and then it ran down them. And then the Bible commanded the ancient Jews to seal themselves with their right hand, which if if it's mirrored, this is my right hand I'm using to cross myself, with their right hand and their forehead to seal Scripture there as and to show people that they were members of God's covenant community. And so on the inside, we've been anointed and sealed by Christ's Holy Spirit. And then we are showing that with our right hand and our forehead that we are His children. So I encourage you, please, if you don't cross yourself, start crossing yourself. When can you cross yourself? That's a good question. Typically, there are certain times during the liturgy that people will cross themselves. If you're new to Anglicanism or if you've never visited a liturgical church, just kind of look around and you'll start to see people cross themselves or you'll see the priest cross himself, and that is an acceptable time to do so. Other people, like myself, I tend to cross myself any time the Trinity or the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost or the Holy Three or any other name it goes by is mentioned to remind myself that I am a Trinitarian Christian by the grace of the cross. And then also, I cross myself after most blessings of a meal, after most personal prayers. And then if I feel tempted, or whenever I go into a situation that I feel like I'm going to have to struggle with something greatly, or if even if I just feel sad and low, I cross myself because I bless myself. Because I want Christ's blessing through me onto myself. Because I love him and I don't want there to be anything that I experience in this life without him. That's the last reason and the last how and when and why to cross yourself. Is that we should not want to go through anything in life without our beloved. And he is our beloved. He is our spouse. We are his bride. And so we should want to go through every moment of this amazing, beautiful, blessed life that he has given us as a grace gift with him at our side. St. Tertullian, going back to him, he says that, remember, any time they would walk forward or walk backwards or rise up or lie down or go in or go out, they were wearing their foreheads out, making the sign of the cross. And why was that? Not just for all the reasons I just now mentioned but also because they wanted to bring their beloved with them. They wanted to remind themselves that, hey, yes, Christ is with me and I love him and it is by his grace that I'm here and I want to do all things with him. It is a way of inviting our Lord into our lives, into our heartaches, into our joys, into our mundane tasks that we think are beneath him, but that he so desires to join with us in. So I encourage you, go out and make the sign of the cross. Make your, your, yourself a cross-living Christian. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.